Hi guys, this is lesson two of the match function, and here, as promised, we're gonna do you be doing matches where numbers are involved instead of letters. Okay, and what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is that the lookup value is a number here, as opposed to in the previous video, our lookup value was a letter. Okay, so in this situation there's actually th uh, three choices you have that the function gives you one is an exact match one is a match that finds the largest value that is less than or equal to the lookup value and the other the third one here is a match that finds the smallest value that is greater than or equal to the lookup value okay so what does all this mean well let's start with our example okay so we can delete all this and we have two lookup tables by the way and I'll explain why we have two the first lookup table is used for this as the arrow indicates as well as this for exact match although for exact match it really makes no difference about your lookup table in a match that uses the third argument of positive one you need your table your lookup table to be in ascending order okay when you're dealing with numbers and we'll do the example so we see what we're talking about so here here equals match our lookup value is this 11 this column comma our lookup array is this column over here we lock that comma and as promised, because of what this column header says, we're going to use type 1. That's positive 1. And what 1 does again is it, match, it matches the largest, it tries to find the largest value that is less than or equal to the lookup value. So let's see what that gets us. Let's drag this down. So for 11, it looks at this table and it finds the largest value that is less than or equal to 11. So 10 is the largest value that is less than or equal to 11. There's really no competition. 21. 21 falls above 20. But what's the largest value that is less than or equal to 21 out of these three? Well, 20 is the largest one that's less than or equal to 21. So it gives us column th I mean row 3 which corresponds with 20. 10 is an exact match, so there's no question about that. It gives us back row 1. 16. What's the largest value that is less than or equal to 16? Well, 15. And so we get back row 2. 13 will give us row 1, because that's the largest value that is less than or equal to 13, and that's in row 1. Now here, with this 9, What's the value that what's the value that is less the largest value that is less than or equal to 9? Well, we have no value over here that is less than or equal to 9. So, the match function doesn't work there for us. It gives us a not available, okay? And for 60, we'll let the value that is largest value that is less than or equal to 60 is 20, so we get column row 3. Okay? And so that's what the positive one means at the end of the match uh, function. Okay. Now let's do a quick one for the zero. We're going to match again C7, which is our type, to the same table. We'll lock the table, and this time we'll hit comma zero, which means give me an exact match. Well. There's going to be no exact match for 11 here. There's going to be no exact match for 21. 10 luckily has an exact match, and that corresponds to row 1 of that array. 16, 13, 9, and 60 all have no matches, no exact matches. So we get all NAs except for the 1 here because 10 exact match row one and that's why we get a row one here that's supposed to be a one by the way sorry okay 
now and we've already done this in the previous video so this was just to see how the argument zero works with numbers so you would seldom use this when you're dealing with lookup of numbers now let's do negative one so equals match for negative one what that means is that the match function is going to find the smallest value that is greater than or equal to look up to the lookup value. Okay, so when you do when you use negative one, your table has to be in descending order. Okay, so as you can see, our table three numbers are in descending order. Whereas when we use positive one, our table had to be in ascending order okay smallest to largest okay that's the setup so equals match again we're looking up this 11 comma we're looking it up in this table this time f4 to lock comma negative one now let's see what happened it found 11 this it found that the smallest value that is greater than or equal to 11 is 15 right that's the smallest value that was greater than or equal to 11 so and that corresponded to row 2 right and that's why we got 2 here now let's drag this formula down and let's see the logic behind this 21 we get an NA why is that because the smallest value that is larger than or equal to greater than or equal to 21 there is nothing greater than or equal to 21 here so we get an NA okay with 10 well 10 is an exact match so corresponding to the third row so we get a 3 16 what's the smallest value in this table that is less than that is greater than or equal to 16 well smallest value that is greater than or equal to 16 is 20 is uh, what's the smallest value that is greater than or equal to 16 uh, well that's 20 all right it has to be greater than 16 and the smallest thing well there's only one thing more than 16 so it's 20 and that is the first row okay now 13 the smallest number that is greater than or equal to 13 is 15 and that's in row 2 hence we get a 2 here and what's the smallest value that is greater than or equal to 9 in this table well 10 is the smallest value that is greater than or equal to 9 so we get row 3 here okay so the match function is returning the row number corresponding with what you're searching for and then it also depends on whether you put a 1 a 0 or a negative 1 and this video was to illustrate the differences between those three arguments which is required for you to put in in the last argument of the match function okay so I wanted to illustrate these side by side so you see what they're doing okay and let's just finish this off 60 well what's the smallest number that is greater than or equal to 60 in this table well there is no number greater than or equal to 60 so we get an NA okay so you see each of these columns gave us NA's and some valid answers so you have to think what you need to match what your what your data looks like and depending on that choose the appropriate uh, level one zero or negative one with the match function okay if you're using letters like a b c or words i would recommend zero if you're using numbers you have to think how do i want what do i want to use one or negative one if you're using negative one you got to have a descending order lookup table if you're using positive one your lookup table has to be in ascending order okay so in the next video, I'm going to do an, a match function that gets embedded within an index function. And then you start seeing actually 
why you even want the row number of a uh, lookup okay and uh, usually the match function is kind of a nested inside an index function and that's where it becomes very useful so this was to build up to that if you missed the first video on the match function be sure to watch that be sure to subscribe to my channel and watch all the other excel access powerpoint and math tutorial videos till next time have a great day